Today we're gonna to be talking about crystal skulls. I know a lot of you guys have started your <laughs> connection with the skulls already and I am sure you have already learned that once you break that seal, more skulls continue to come into your life. Um, Peony was my first skull and I'll tell you, um, we, we did a little bit of chatting about skulls last night in intuition workshop and so I'm kind of going to piggyback on all those things and just kind of give you a little overview on the skulls and tell you my thoughts about the things. Um, when I've never liked skulls, um, I found them kind of scary and um, off-putting and just kind of, especially as I was getting into more spiritual realms, um, I still had that programming that I wanted to stay away from dark things and skulls for me were very dark and um, I was afraid of being too witchy. Thankfully, as you've noticed, I've gotten over that, but that's how I was brought up. So I really stayed away from anything that had any occult um, culture vibes around it and skulls were one of those things. So um, in the past couple years, as I've become acquainted with people who have skulls and work with them, and um, as the energy of the skulls keeps coming in, I started to get interested. And it was back in May that um, I saw Peony on Instagram. She's like, mm-hmm, you sure did. I saw Peony on Instagram, and I was like, oh my God, that is, the prettiest skull I've ever seen, not terrifying at all, just like so beautiful. And I'm not a rose quartz person, like it doesn't really, you know, bring me any kind of feelings usually, but there's something about Peony. So she was my Mother's Day present. Um, and when she came, I was like, whoa, I really like this skull. So that's how Peony came to me. And when, um, when I first got her, I was obviously on Google and like talking to everybody I could, trying to figure out how to connect with my skull and like what do I do and all of those things. But it's kind of like, um, like anything, your instinct kind of kicks in. So when you first get a skull, your first order of business should be to cleanse it and clear it um, from its journey. I find, and I was saying this last night, that skulls don't tend to retain or absorb the energy quite like a regular crystal does. And I don't know why that is, but I've been noticing it, but I, I cleanse my new crystals regardless. And so you can do that in any way that you, um, you like to cleanse your crystals. So you can do smudging, you can do some fire cleansing. You can do, um, you can set it out for the new or the full moon. You can set them out in the sun if it's the type of crystal that's not gonna get bleached by the sun. Or you can just hold your skull and close your eyes and visualize white light clearing it. And then once you do that, as you're in this position, and this is my favorite way, it's a great time to connect with your skull by simply keeping it at eye level and softening your gaze. So you're looking, but then you're softening so that you're completely unfocused with your eyes. And just allow your energies to merge and see what you feel. So depending on your skull's personality, and what's going on with you, you may get like, boom, messages right away, or you may not connect at all the first time. Um, Rose is saying, Azriel Bell likes to be cleansed with rose water. Yes, and so that brings me to the next thing about your skulls. They have their own personalities. They have things they like and things they don't like. And so getting to know your individual skull will be a journey for you and unique to you guys, right? but it's always important to respect your skull, okay? Because your skull is housing energies, an energy or many energies. I don't know. Some of my skulls only have one energy, some have many. But what it's, what it's like is imagine 
um, your skull as a telephone, okay? And you are able to connect with energies that are not here, not present, that are very, very far away. They're able to send their energy through the skull and communicate with you, okay? So their energy is housed in the skull when they are present with you. And this is the vessel that they have chosen to be in to connect with you at this time. So you want to treat your skull with a lot of respect and not just toss them around, um, you know, don't put, her, put them in a purse and forget about them. You want to make sure you treat them with respect. And the same goes for all of your crystals because these entities and energies can also be housed within regular crystals as well, not just crystal skulls. So you may have a crystal in your possession that speaks to you in such a way and that brings in channeled information that is completely possible. So with the skulls, after you've cleansed them, just be around their energy. I get a lot of people asking me, um, you know, I don't hear my skull, I don't hear my skull. And in my, my experience, which is pretty limited at this point, but fast, um, you can't force the conversation with a crystal skull. You just need to trust that if that particular skull has come to you, there is a reason and when the time is right, you will be connecting and working together. Remember that much like we talked yesterday about the voice in your head being anxiety versus intuition, when you're talking with your skull, just remind yourself that sometimes that voice can sound very much like your own voice. Because when I'm connecting with things, it's very rare that a voice will come through that doesn't sound like me, okay? So I've had to learn to pay really close attention to that because it'll be me, but a little bit different. Maybe a little bit softer in tone or stranger spacing of syllables or, or when I hear the voice that's me, I also feel energy moving through my body. So pay attention to all of those things when you're receiving um, words in your mind that you're like, oh, is this my imagination? Um, because it is your imagination. Your imagination is the place where all things originate. And for most of us, it's the only place where other energies can like get in here because it's the only place that's like not guarded, right? Because we're like, oh, it's imagination. Anything can live there. So that's usually a place where the messages come in, your imagination, all right? So when connecting with your skulls, just kind of soften yourself and allow whatever happens to happen. Um, every skull has their own personality. Peony, when I'm channeling with her, um, I feel a very loving, soft energy that moves up and down my body. And usually when I tap in and I'm speaking for her and I'm letting myself like get out of the driver's seat, um, I will have to look off to the side and a smile will come on my face. And I know that that's like when things have clicked in and, and we're talking. She also communicates with me when we're not channeling um, by just kind of being in my thoughts. And that has been happening quite a bit. So there's that. And then we have him. And I'm going to bring him up because him does not have only one energy within him. He has um, two that I know of. And much like Brandy channels a skull that's named Elliot, Elliot is many energies in one. So that's totally a thing that can happen. Him has an energy within him that connects with Peony and is like her, I don't know if it's like a spiritual support system or something like that, it's, that's what's been communicated. And then him also has another energy that's here to help me um, channeling programs and doing writing. So we haven't done a whole lot of work together yet because um, he's been waiting for me to get my act together, but it's coming. All right, so if anyone has skull questions, go ahead and, and send them in. The skulls are coming in so much, just like the dragons are coming in because people are waking up super fast. And like I've been seeing so much of this and it's so exciting because it's like these, people are waking up to their ancient gifts. 
and it's like zero to 60. So it's really fast paced movement and it's a lot and we need all the help we can get, right? So the skulls are coming in to assist us, to connect with us, to give us assistance, um, raise our vibration, align us to different energies and to help us with the projects that we need to, to do during this time to bring in the new earth energy. So we're being um, taken to work by the skulls right now. So with that being said, I'm going to introduce you to the newest member here. Um, <laughs> this is Rocket. Aaron says, how many skulls are too many? And I'm, you know me, so I don't think that I can answer that question. <laughs> Rose is asking, is there a time of day where you feel the skulls really like to come through and talk to you? So I would flip that question around and say, is there a time of day when you are more accessible to receiving energy? So for some of us, that time is early morning. For some of us, it's late at night. It just depends on you. When are you most open, soft, relaxed, and able to connect? That would be a great time to connect. Um, like each skull has their own personality, uh, they do have to also work with you, right? So Alicia is asking, do we name them or do they tell us their name? That's a really good question. So. We love to name things because names allow us to recall specific energy signatures. Not everywhere are there names for things. In many other planets and galaxies and solar systems and different um, cultures of beings, communication is done through energy and in your thoughts and even through touch. So naming things is a very human way of going about it, but it is how we very seriously call in specific energy signatures. So for example, if you're calling on, um, let's we'll just use Jesus as an example, Jesus as an energy signature. When you say the name Jesus, you're connecting to that specific Christ consciousness frequency, and that's how you pull it in. So much like that, when a skull has a name, you are naming that specific energetic frequency that's coming through so that you can very quickly access it again by using that name. Does that make sense? So that being said, your skull will likely give you a name um, that then you can use to call in their energy signature. So with, with um, Rocket, for example, I picked him up and I haven't really connected much with him, but I picked him up and kind of looked at him and I heard rocket and it sounded like my own voice. So just kind of go with the flow, tap into your skull, close your eyes. What name comes through? What makes sense? If nothing comes through, just leave it alone and try again another time, or it may just kind of pop through when you're not thinking about it. The, the most, um, the biggest obstacle you can create for yourself is by forcing yourself into things and trying to make them a certain way. So be in flow with it, relax with it, and just enjoy the energy and then see what comes. But from what I have noticed, the skulls will usually give you a name and you might think you picked the name. So that's up for debate, but that's how it's been happening with me. I hope that makes sense. So. Rocket is here, and this is actually a funny story. Rocket is <laughs> okay. Rocket is no gender. But if Rocket had to pick a gender, Rocket would pick male at this time. Okay, so there's that. Margaret is asking, does the size of the skull matter? 
Excellent question also. I wasn't gonna bring her out, but she's been making a lot of noise back here. So, no is the short answer to that. The size of the skull does not matter because the skull is housing the energetic frequency of who you are communicating with, so it does not matter how big the skull is. But depending on the type of crystal that it is carved out of, um, each crystal has its own vibrational frequency as well. So like, let's say you have like, a, you get a massive, um, like rutilated quartz crystal, that's going to have a really much more intense energy than say like a very small rose quartz crystal, right? Just because of the frequency of the stone and the size of that specific stone. So when you're choosing um, crystals or you're choosing any crystals and you're choosing a crystal skull, rule of thumb is to kind of go with how you feel, who's calling to you, right? Um, for me, I'm going to tell you this story real quick because it, it kind of applies. So I get all of my crystal skulls from Rocked on Instagram. She's freaking awesome. And she does her stories, right? And so that's how you buy the crystals. So I was looking through her stories and I saw Rocket. And I was like, oh my God, look at that. Like just seriously, holy moly. And so I, I messaged her and I was like, okay, I need that one like right now. And she was like, okay. So bought Rocket. Back in June or July, Peony told me that another skull was coming and it was an orange skull and it will come in the fall. And I was like, okay. And I think I like looked for orange skulls for a minute and then I totally forgot about it. So while I just purchased Rocket, Dawn from uh, who sold me the skull decided to send in a friend and here is the orange skull. So I'm very aware that that whole thing was just so that this orange skull could come in. Now this is Dinah and I will say she is a small skull. She is orange fluorite and she has the most intense and powerful energy of any of the skulls that I have. Sorry, Peony. Um, when I hold her, I can feel her in my whole body, and she has a very ancient, um, very feminine, ancient, composed, stately, matriarchal type of energy. And her voice, like when I connect with her, is very different than my own. Very different uh, from my own. So I'm excited to work with Dinah. Dinah has come through to help me to finish the reactivation series, um, bringing in the light codes and activations through that program. So I will be channeling with her for that program. So I'm really excited about that. Yeah, Dinah is amazing. So um, when I first got her, I just, I literally couldn't stop holding her. So no, size doesn't matter. Ooh. Tony, what can you feel through the live? Hey, Erin. So yes, there is that. So I've got my hands full with the skulls. <laughs> And I'm sure as, as you guys start interacting with your skulls, I know a lot of you guys are buying skulls right now, um, you will have your hands full as well. But the other cool thing to do, which I think we're gonna be doing tonight, is you can bring your skulls together and have a little skull party. Um, a lot of my skulls know my friends. And so that's been really interesting to, um, to witness. So Peony, and I think Erin's here, Peony, knows my friend Erin Schrader, and when Peony senses Erin's energy, she gets very excited and is like, oh, hmm, it's Erin. And when I first got Dinah, she told me her name, and then she told me, I know Erin. So Dinah is also acquainted with Erin, so <laughs> it's just so funny. But it's really awesome to get your skulls together and have a little skull party, and, um, um, you know, have them see how they interact with each other, see how they interact with your friends. And of course, always ask permission. 
if your skulls from from your skulls um, before you like subject them to a party. So Margaret, yes, I will post the link. It's so she's only on Instagram. So it's rocked, R O C K E D dot, and that's on Instagram. But I will um, put it in my stories on Instagram, which will then I think come here. Hey Birgit, so um, if you can believe it, I didn't even ask what um, what Rocket is. But Brandy was here and we determined that we believe Rocket is pyrite that is then coated with a titanium um, thing. So I'm gonna ask Don for sure though, because it, it would be nice to know. He's He looks light, but he does have a heft to him. Um, yeah. He's, uh, Rock, Rocket says that he's here to lighten me up because I need to I need to lighten up and he wants to come to any parties he always wants to come to parties <laughs> okay <laughs> cool <laughs> so another thing is that um, depending on your relationships with your skulls and I think Tony is this happening for you too um, the skulls are coming in and helping us channel actual things to work with. New attunements and frequencies, new programs. I know that ever since I got Peony, my business has continued to change drastically each month because I'm constantly getting upgrades and advice and tips and being shown programs and channeled information. So it's kind of nonstop with that. Um, I do wanna say though, much like with anything, we always talk about the spiritual hierarchy. And I just want to remind you as you work with your skulls and with your crystals and with your dragons, please remember your sovereignty and your humanness. So you are not bossed around by a crystal skull and you're not bossed around by anything. So you are sovereign and you are your own being and you set boundaries that work for you. So um, because they can get bossy. Um, Peony tells me to do things all the time and most of the time I do them because they are good ideas anyway like she would prefer well, I didn't listen this morning but she prefers that I get up take a shower and like do my face and get all made up for my live videos and especially if I'm channeling her because she thinks that I need to put some effort into my presentation so when she tells me to do stuff like that, I'm like, okay, fine, because that's not a terrible idea. Um, but I've had to put boundaries in place as far as, uh, no, we don't need to channel at 3 a.m. in the morning because like that's really, really disruptive to my sleep schedule. And I've had to learn that because it's exciting to like be up in the middle of the night channeling stuff, but also I have you know children to take care of and like cyber school to do and clients to see, so I can't, um, I can't function off of no sleep. So it, it takes a little bit of working through to find what works for you, but always stay in your sovereignty and make sure you have your good boundaries in place because you don't need to be bossed around by anybody, right? Okay, so. Oh my God, all three of them want to talk to you guys. <laughs> okay, we're gonna let Rocket, um, we're gonna let Rocket say some things because that should be interesting. I'm here because it's been a tough time. 
It's been a tough time for Sarah, and I'm here to lighten it up and remind all of you that you need to lighten up too. It's very important not to get lost. Do you know what I'm saying? Humans get lost in the stories because there are a lot of stories. Humans have forgotten they write the stories. Humans have forgotten they're living old stories all the time. I'm here to remind you to write your own stories, to have fun, to do the things that make you feel happy. When everything is so serious, that energy is dense. Nothing can rise up in dense energy. You are all connected to your families and the stars all the time. You do not need any crystals or skulls to connect with them, but it's easier for them to connect with you through these vibrational tools. I hope you're laughing. Don't I sound so serious? I told you, don't be serious, but I'm speaking very seriously. That's funny. I hope you're laughing. Thank you. All right. So, we have met Rocket. Oh my God. That was definitely a different energy from Peony. All right, my friends. I have no idea what time it is. It's 9.30. Yeah, he's a hoot. He's a hoot. So I have my hands full. I'll keep you updated. <laughs> I'll keep you updated. Uh, but now I'm pretty well balanced, I think, because um, channeling Rocket feels pretty masculine, um, like pretty masculine energy, and him has masculine energy, and then, oh, that made my eye hurt, and um, Peony and Dinah are very feminine energy, so at least I'm kind of balanced out here, but yeah, woo! <laughs> I'm bringing Rocket tonight, um, Claudia, so <laughs> we all need some Rocket. All right, friends. Well, if you have any questions about skulls that come up, go ahead and post them in the Facebook group. If you are interested in pre-purchasing reactivation, which <laughs> Dinah will be helping me to create the content for, um, that is launching on October 1st, and it is going to be a four week activation that you do at your own pace. And um, through that activation, you get five chats with me, one, two, three, four, five, and then an evening meditation. And during those chats, you will receive light codes and activations that will help align you to new earth frequencies and whatever else, I have no idea yet, but it'll be four weeks. And um, you can pre-purchase that using the link that says join our community. Um, if you have any questions, just send me a note. Have a great day. Mwah.